Hey, it's William Christopher Ford. In this installment of 52 Masters, Beijing Shuizhou, otherwise known as Chinese wrestling, with my friend, Sifu Sunny Manon. That being said, let's get to training. I am 51 years old. I've been a practitioner of Okinawan Shodin Ryu Karate since I was seven. There were some who would call me a master. I assure you, I am not. I believe that the true expert is someone who still has a student's heart and a beginner's mind. This year, to celebrate turning 52, I'm setting out to learn from 52 other disciplines, each from its own master. Some things I've tried before, others, I'm a first day beginner, like anyone else. 52 weeks, 52 new skills. I'm William Christopher Ford, and this is 52 Masters. If I come in, and I'm standing like this, I can move him, but the odds of him going down are a lot lower, okay? Now if I can get to this position, okay, lengthen out, right? And then what was the last thing? Turn the head, okay? It clears that space a lot better. This is evident in many, many techniques, not just this one, where you come in and you know, you're here and you go, you try to pull like that and you haven't done anything except pull him into you. But if I can lengthen out, he comes all the way around and through. So these three movements right here, there's a few other ones, make sure. Um, you see they're a warm up, they're really good for the body, and they have direct usage and carryover to what you're doing on, on the mat with somebody else, okay? It lays those patterns in and down really quick, really quick. You have to be quick and light, quick and light. While there is pressure down, the pressure is coming from you, okay? You can do this really easy. You can just sit here and go, but what good is that, okay? It's your own intention and focus that makes this difficult, okay? So you have to put down, keep your center, keep your weight forward, okay? You feel like it's trapped, this foot is trapped, and you have to pull it, and then put it back down. Pull it, okay? Lift your just a little bit more. Good. Good. If you just practice it like this, well, when you really need it is when you're trapped down and you still need to move your foot, but you're not going to have it because you never trained it that way. Okay? So it's on your own focus. You want it to be quick. Okay? Here. I'm not doing that, but I am going as quick as I can. That Kind of, this is not, you're not really focusing on kicking your butt. It's this quickly pulling it out. And that just means the, the, the flow of that comes back higher, you know. We're training for when somebody puts the technique on really, really well. Can you still get out of it? Can you still find that movement, right? Can you still and get that out, okay? If Trevor does it to me, if he comes through, right, right. You see how much far, how far I'm going forward? If he gets that big whip, I've got to be able to step out. And now, from that position, if he does it again, here, I can step. So you see how this simple move, really, really useful, okay? There's a lot of common moves in stand-up shui jiao, okay? where the guy maybe will come and hook the foot, right? Hook and, and push like that. Now, when, when, it, when, the, when, he, when he does that, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to block this leg and, you know, send him going back down that way, okay? So, if you do that to me, easy, gonna be talking through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, right? What he's trying to do is he's trying to push me so I go like that, and if I do that, I'm gonna go down. But if he goes in that position, good, right? And I can, I can hear, I can turn. See that? That really subtle hip turn. Good. There, already I've neutralized a little bit of what he's trying to do to me. And then I can pull, if possible, if it's there. If, if I get in a situation where he does some sloppy stepping, he crosses his feet, 
I can kick without having to do that, right? I can just, if I see that opportunity, I can kick without any sort of um, wind up. Mm -hmm. But you know, it has to be instinct and the only way it's done through instinct is through repetition, lots and lots of repetitions. Good. This kick, the kick is not super important, but once again, the kick is just coming from the hip. You're not really thinking, good. That's, 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 how, that's exactly from the, from the hip. This is more, the kick is more to just check your stance, to make sure your weight's forward. Because if you feel like you have to shift your weight forward just to do the kick, well guess what, your weight's too far back. That's a big thing in, in, in Shui Jiao, at least in Beijing Shui Jiao. We're not, this isn't, this isn't just a, like a, a sport where our only goal is to throw the guy on the ground. Our goal is to like bring forth our training, our practice, our art, right? It's, we want to be able to show, so you know, like we joke, you know, in the Shui Jiao match, like if somebody uses a technique, you should be able to say, oh, that was that technique. That was that technique. He used this. He used this footwork, this grip, this technique. You should be able to see it, you know? And, and even, um, it shouldn't just be like two people crashing together and then one guy falls over and you have no idea how they did it. Yeah. Now, in a competition setting, that's okay. Everything's very binary, black and white. Did he go down or did he not? That's all you're concerned about. But I think from the art aspect of it, you're always trying to improve yourself, improve your technique, improve what you're doing. You can do it, you can be, even if the technique is successful, you know, your, your teacher should be looking at it and saying, how can it be better? Because maybe it's not gonna work against the next guy. I say you have to train assuming that you're, who you're going up against is, is, is just as strong of you as you, if not stronger. His technique is just as good as yours, right? And he's got experience, just as much experience as you have. So how you beat him? You beat him with um, strategy, right? And being clever. That doesn't mean that's where you focus. That means you better work hard in these other areas to make sure these are at the top of their game. Because that's, that's, that's just leveling the playing field. <laughs> you know, if you think I'm really strong, that's gonna get you over, oh, that's, gonna, that's gonna hit a wall eventually, so you're gonna find somebody stronger. If you think my te technique's better, no. You know what? If you train hard enough, you'll get technique. If you got a good teacher, if you, and, and so that only gets you so far. Experience, you know, you can wrestle a lot and get some good experience, get some tricks. Tricks only get you so far, you know? When, when I'm doing this, if Trevor steps in front of me, if I go like this, it, it's pretty easy. It's not that hard for me to get around him, right? Okay. So also, if he, if he steps in front of me, go ahead, and I start to move before he gets there, also pretty easy. So what do I want to do? One, I want to wait. I want to wait until he gets there, and then when I step, I'm going to step close, slide through, slide through. Say ta, to like stick and slide. Here, through, coming in, and now he's going to take that little bit, and then through. I have to soften my hips right here, otherwise I'm going up. So I step through. Good. I don't want to let yourself be in a bad position. Because better to feel it now yeah. than to feel it as you're going flying over and you've never been in that position before. When I go, this side of my body has to stay connected while the other side has to stay loose. I didn't say this was an easy technique. Okay, here, and as I go, you watch this side. Okay, that's what brings him here. I don't leave that behind me. <laughs> yes, good. That's it. That, I, we can work with that. Keep do do that about um, a thousand more shoulders. Yes. So shoulder underneath. Yep. That's it. Chair around Good. Yeah. When you do it, right? You're 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 doing it right. What you're doing is you're going under and then coming up and staying straight. There should be no up and no straight. So here, you got to come this way. Okay. <laughs> through that through that hole, and you feel like that. <laughs> right, where am I going? Yeah. And then, and then, that, then you hit the body and the leg, and then that turn flips him around. The solo move is here, like that, there. And you have to soften.
are back with C for Sunday. Thank you so much. Thank you. That yeah. was pretty cool. We are sitting actually on the same mat that he was throwing his student Trevor around. So uh, yeah. this is pretty cool. I'm still feeling the... Uh, There's a little bit of the, some reverberations yes. here still, right? I can still feel, <laughs> feel the vibrations. Pretty cool. So um, uh, for our audience, this is actually the first time that C for Sunday and I have actually met. We, uh, I was introduced to him uh, through uh, my good friend C for Rob Moses. And he was like, you got to get this guy down here. And uh, we finally made it happen. And it was uh, hopefully worth the drive for you. Yeah, very, <laughs> much, very much so. Yeah. I um, you know, want to thank you for being a supporter of the 52 Masters. I know that you know, you've been uh, watching uh, some of the other episodes. And we really appreciate your support. And uh, you know, after hearing Sifu Rob talk about you a little mm -hmm. bit, I said, oh, this guy's uh, he's going to be a good match, you know, <laughs> because you got the right personality. Plus, you know, we haven't really shown uh, this art. This art is. is is a kind of a, a, a well-kept secret even within the Kung Fu <coughs> community. It, it, yeah, it really is. You know, like um, Shui Jiao, they say, is the oldest Chinese martial art. Mm. You know, supposedly has 5,000 years of history. Mm. But, you know, the it was centered uh, mostly in the north mm. of China. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Chinese diaspora that, you know, people immigrating um, to the United States is mostly from the south. Mm -hmm. So they brought a lot of southern Kung Fu, whereas people from the north, you know, stayed at home. So you didn't really get you know, anybody, you know, emigrating, you know, generations ago that knew Shui Jiao very well. It's only been um, recently that mm. people, you know, um, have become more and more aware of Shui Jiao. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and even still within the, within, you know, within the Kung Fu community, it's still very um, kind of unknown, especially the mm. Beijing style mm -hmm. of Shui Jiao, which mm -hmm. is uh, what I, was what I do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I moved back here to the States, you know, my goal was to kind of just, you know, share this art, you know, with people, mm -hmm. and let them see what it's all about. You lived in China for eight years. You speak Chinese fluently. So uh, how did that journey begin? Well, you know, I, I always wanted to do Kung Fu. Mm. I mean, since I was a kid, mm. I wanted to do Kung Fu. I mm. mean, um, I grew up watching, you know, um, the like Black Belt Theater yeah. on Saturdays, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and, sure. and um, running around the living room thinking I was a ninja, right, you know. Right, but right. I grew up in a small town in the Central Valley of California. Okay. And I always joke that, you know, I was really disappointed when there, I found out there wasn't like a Shaolin temple, mm -hmm. you know, in my town, you know, like, <laughs> I was like, every town should have a Shaolin temple. That's where right. you go to do Kung Fu. Right, right, right. right. And so I kind of put it on the, the back burner and um, played regular sports, whatnot. But when I graduated from university um, where I played uh, basketball, collegiate mm -hmm. basketball, mm -hmm. like almost right after I was done playing, I, I went to the movies and I saw a Jackie Chan movie. Okay. And this kind of, um, uh, it kind of popped back into my head. Mm -hmm. It was like, wait, Kung Fu, you wanted to do Kung Fu, like, right. like what's stopping you? And right, so, right. and so I went in the yellow pages, mm -hmm. right? Cause it wasn't, things were on the internet back then. Yeah, yeah. And um, I found a Kung Fu school that was literally two blocks from my house. Mm. And I didn't know what, if, what was good, what was bad. I was just like, I'm gonna go try it out. Mm -hmm. And um, it ended up being a really good school. Mm. And I mean, it pretty much, everything from then changed, right? I, I, I went to do Kung Fu every night for, hours you know that's all I wanted to do I mean it really um, I was working part-time and uh, I even did the math you know like uh, after a couple years I did the math okay I need to work this many hours this many hours a week to make mm. this much money mm. so I could train this much mm. and so then when my when my uh, employers would give me a raise I'd go back and like do the math again <laughs> <laughs> oh okay now I only have to work this many hours right. and it was really funny because they would start like oh, you add the weapons <laughs> yeah yeah right and they're like uh -huh. but then my people I worked for were like Oh, um, he's not working as much. We need to keep him. Let's pay him more, and then mm. take a little more time off. And, and it so was all going to kung fu. All going to just like That's living as simply as I could. Wow. So I could do kung fu, and it, and I I I just trained in Southern California. Mm. I trained in Seattle, mm. and so after doing that for a while, I thought, well, you know what, I want to. I loved traveling. I loved. Mm. I kind of had the itchy feet, you know. Yeah. I wanted to travel, and so mm. I'm like, well, I should just move to China and and see what I could find, mm. and um and so. I decided, you know, like, well, all right, I'm gonna go check it out. And I went over there, not really with the plan to live mm. there for eight years, mm. just to go and you know, maybe I could find a teacher. And I got really lucky, found two amazing teachers in Beijing. Mm. Um, because I, the bar was set pretty high. My teachers were here were amazing. Mm. You know, like I couldn't have asked for better teachers. And so um, I was actually, when I was there, I was getting pretty frustrated. I couldn't find anybody mm. that really stood out to me. And then I just got kind of really lucky and ran into these two guys that were just amazing. Mm. And um, I was kind of like, all right, this is, this is it. And it was like, I'll stay for a year. And then after the first year, oh, I barely know anything. Mm. <laughs> Two more years. And then after the third year, it was kind of like, well, this is just where I live now. Mm -hmm. and, and then 
and then eventually I decided, well, I guess it's time to go back home. It's been a while. Yeah. You know, like yeah. uh, Beijing's a great city. I love it, but um, I missed I missed home and yeah. missed uh, California. So it's time to come back. How long was it before you began to speak Chinese fluently? Well, I moved over there and I couldn't speak any Chinese. And I had a, got lucky a few people like, you know, helped me make contacts. And the two teachers that I ended up training with didn't speak any English, mm. you know. And I remember the first, the first thing I learned how to say was, uh, and I had somebody teach me, and I, and I went to my teacher the next day. We were practicing, and I looked at him, and I said really seriously, I said, Jaga Dongzoa Zimma Yong. It means, how do you use this move? <laughs> and he looks at me and goes, oh? He's like, oh, give me a word. He's like, boom, he like throws me down. I'm like, all right, it worked, <laughs> I think. You know, like either, either yeah. it, it, he got it or I insulted him and he threw me on the ground. Right. And so, <laughs> but I'm going to keep with it because it had a good, a good effect. All and right. so um, I just was uh, training and talking with them. And mm. so, you know, maybe after about two or three years, I felt okay, mm. but I was very limited. I could talk about uh, Kung Fu and Shuai Zhao and okay. martial arts and that's it. That's I couldn't it. have very many other conversations. Mm. That and getting myself fed. Mm. And then after five or six years, I started getting really comfortable and, mm. and um, I would, I would take, go with my teacher to do seminars mm. abroad and translate and mm. stuff. And then by the time I left, um, I felt like you know I would dream in Chinese or, mm. or I would get stuck and I couldn't think of the, the English word. Mm. And I would be like, oh, but the Chinese word fits so much better, right, you know? Right, right. And, um, and it's really interesting how the the, I mean, Kung Fu is so wrapped up with the Chinese culture mm. and philosophy, and the mm. language is such a big part of that. And so being able to speak the language and uh, read Chinese and stuff really did add a, another level to my understanding of the art. Mm. Because there are times when characters are used and you realize that the character has uh, many meanings, mm. and that they're, this, they, the parts of the character have different meanings, and that mm. is applicable. And if you just translate it to the to the English, you might miss out on that a little bit, mm. you know, without some further explanation. Mm. But well, your uh, please pronounce your the style that you do. Um, I mean, I know you study many styles. But yeah. The Chinese wrestling, please pronounce that for me. Shuai Jiao. Shuai Jiao. Shuai Jiao. Shuai Jiao. What does that mean? It literally means wrestling. Wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. That's to it. to to throw and take down. Shuai Jiao. Shuai yeah. Jiao. Yeah. It's um. It's uh. It's a very direct art, you know. Like, mm. there's, like I said, there's not very many like flowering names. You know, yeah. you're not gonna. There's not gonna be a technique called, you know, Phoenix circles the clouds or something. Mm. You know, techniques are, you know, um, you know, s split, break. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, press and mm. pull and that kind of stuff. It's mm. very direct. And so, Shuai Jiao just means um, wrestling. Mm. And so sometimes we'll say, you know, like, uh, you know. Um, Zhong Wu Shi Shuai Jiao or Zhong Shi Shuai Jiao Chinese wrestling, mm. and then every once in a while they'll make a further um, kind of uh, you know Beijing Shuai Jiao Beijing style wrestling, mm. you know, and there's um, which is just not really its own style. I don't like to say it's more of a different flavor, flavor, yeah. a little different flavor, you mm. know. Um, and so uh, they've used this term now for um, I don't know maybe fifty. 60, 100 years or so. It's mm. had different names. I mean, it's a 5,000 year old art. Mm. And through that time period, it's had many different evolutions, okay. been called different things, mm -hmm. you know, had, you know, ebb and flow of, of the techniques and the practice. Mm. And so, um, but I, I kind of like the, the straightforward of just Shuai Zhao, just wrestling, right? Shuai Zhao. Yeah, Shuai okay. Zhao. I got a question for you. You know, I saw um, a picture of a man, I think it's your Sifu. Um, and he just looks massive. He looks like a <laughs> right. beast. I mean, yeah. he's just like, you know, I mean, he's yeah. just jacked. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, who is that? And that's your... That's my teacher. Oh yeah, my that's, gosh. Um, his name's uh, Liu Zhu Guang. Huh. Um, but everybody calls him uh, Da Guang or, or Da Guar, which kind of translates. I translate it to meaning Da Guang translates to Big Chief. Big <laughs> that's chief. like, that's how I kind of, hey, what's up, Big Chief? You uh -huh. know, like, because that's kind of what he is. He's, he's about six foot two, six foot three, 260 pounds of, of, of muscle. And um, uh, he's a very imposing individual. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. how did he get so big? You, you know, know? He, he, he admits that he was a little bit of a, of a prodigy, you know? Okay. Um, he was always big, he was always athletic, okay. he was always strong. But because of that, he had to um, train kind of extra hard. Because mm. in Shuai Jiao, one of the worst, like, one of the worst things somebody could say to you is to say like, oh, you're, you're very strong, you know? Because what they're really saying is like, 
Oh, you don't have any you technique. You don't have any technique. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a backhanded yeah, instrument. Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, good strength, but no technique. <laughs> and so that's like the worst thing. So he right. was like, you know, I know I'm big, I know I'm strong. I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let that, you know, I don't want people to tell me that. I want them to say, your technique is good. Mm. You're you understand it. He had um, you know, a few different teachers. One of his teachers is in, is uh, his name's uh, Li Bao Ru. Mm. He's one of the most famous Beijing style Shuai Jiao teachers. Um, there is. I mean, mm. he is, he's in his 80s right now, mm. and he still mixes it up. Mm. I mean, he still gets out there and wrestles with people. And um, and so underneath him were a couple of his students that trained, were kind of like the senior students to my teacher. Mm. And they were um, smaller guys. Mm. And so that's who taught him. So mm. he was, even though at that size, he was training like a smaller wrestler. Mm. So he, you know, what, when I went up against him the first time, the first time I, re- I, you know, I met him, he was just like, oh, let's wrestle. And I didn't feel his strength. I just felt, you know, like he was so soft and sensitive. And then he would, you know, put me into this position without me even knowing it. And he was so explosive. I didn't feel like I was being manhandled. Mm. It just felt like all of a sudden I'm flying through the air and hitting mm. the ground. And um, that was really what, I didn't really know that much about Shua Zhao. Mm. I literally just saw him wrestling with somebody mm. and I thought, oh, I need to figure out what this is, mm. you know? And, I, and after he, you know, gave me a whooping uh, I thought I feel like there's some value to this you know yeah, yeah. and um, and when he competed he was uh, about a hundred kilograms so about 220 that's what he competed at you mm. know and that was about his you know I joke with him that his skeleton weighs 220 pounds like mm. he must have been really lean but that at that time it that was that was like the open category mm. so a lot of times his opponents were 250 mm. 300 you know 330 mm. and so he had to wrestle with with a technical, mm. a technical um, game, you know, mm. he couldn't just rely on his strength, mm. and so um, I was very fortunate. I was I was really blown away by how not only physically imposing he was, but how technical he was with his with his teaching. Is he still alive? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's he's um he's in Beijing. He still wrestles. He goes to the park and wrestles and uh, trains students every once in a while. And yeah, he loves it. So you came back to the States and you opened a school in Visalia. Yeah, in Visalia, California. So and you teach now. I do. And yeah. your wife teaches yoga? She does, yeah. Um, yeah. What made you want to open the school and, you know? Well, we were, you know, we were living in Beijing for, for eight years. Mm. And both of us are teachers by trade. Mm. Both worked in education by trade. And so... Where is your wife from? Um, she's also from Visalia. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's from, that's our hometown. That's wow. both of our hometown. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and so we hadn't lived there, I hadn't lived there for almost 20 years. Mm. Same with her. Mm. And so when we were moving back from China, we thought, well, where are we going to go? We're going to go back to the States. Where? And it seemed kind of silly to go someplace else, like mm. when our hometown was just there waiting. Yeah. And her family's there, my family's there, mm-hmm. and like, you know, we had been separated from them for so long. Yeah. It was like, you know, we wanted to kind of be around family. So yeah. We moved back there and um, we're like, well, let's open up. It's always been our dream to open up uh, a school that focuses on, you know, our, the things that we're passionate about, mm. which is, you know, Chinese martial arts and yoga. Mm. You know, we see them. I mean, they're different, obviously, but it's really still there's a lot of overlap as far as what you're trying to um, accomplish. As mm. you know, you're working on yourself. You mm. know, you're you're you're. It's about that mind body connection. You know, yeah. like and and so um, our students. Uh, some of our students do both, you know, you get some students do yoga, kung fu, and now we also teach tai chi, you know, which is a okay. style of kung fu, but sure. they do all three, you know, and mm. it's kind of fun, you know. Um, do you teach any other styles of kung fu? I teach uh, a couple different styles of tai chi. Mm. I teach uh, yang style tai, tai chi, chen style tai chi, mm. um, bagua zhang, which is another kind of internal art. I teach mm. uh, chung style bagua and liang style bagua, mm. and then xing yi chuan, which is a kind of an in, another internal art. And that's just a little bit of praying mantis that I learned a long time ago. I think um, you know what you're doing is amazing, and um, you know the teaching is. Uh, you know, I'm a teacher too, but right. it's, it's. I think it's very noble, you know, because yeah. um, you know, we we want to we want to make people safer. We want to make them more confident. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it it kind of blows my mind when sometimes there's martial arts schools that they compete with each other and it's like dude it's, we're all on the same page we're all trying I, I totally agree. we're all the avengers you know <laughs> it's like you know we're all yeah. you know we're yeah. all trying to make i think better make the world a better place right. you know yeah. and so when i see this you know and you know maybe it's because it's like well they're taking business away from me or then it's like you know let's just 
you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of like what I mentioned a, a little bit earlier. It's like you know, you can focus on the differences, mm -hmm. or you can focus on the similarities. Mm. And and I th I see this, and I talk about this in my classes. You know, when when I'm first teaching somebody, like let's say in in, in Tai Chi, and we're going through the we're going through the movements, and everything is going to be different to them. Mm. You know, they're like this is some this is different from this, and this is different from that. And then eventually, as they're practicing. They have, I'll, I'll see it, you know, it'll be like this little quality shift in their understanding mm. where they say, hey, this is like in this move, mm. or this is mm. like in this move. And mm. I tell them, I go, I go this is, this is um, you know, I don't really believe in like, you know, like this level progression kind of thing. Yeah. I, you know, we kind of just go deeper into mm. the, even the simple things. But yeah. I say, this is like a quality shift in your understanding. You're starting to see the similarities in, how, uh, in things. Mm. And, um, and I think that's important. You mm. know, it's easy to focus on the differences, mm. and but that you know pushes people apart. Yeah. But if you focus on the similarities, um, you really find how how rich you know things can be. Mm. You know, and I feel like there's an overlap to this. When I was in, like when I lived in Beijing, um, and I lived there for a long time. You know, so I got to see people move there and move away and come in, and everybody with their first year when they're there, they'd say like they'd be blown away by how different things were in China. Oh, they do it this way, do they do it that way, they do it this way, it's so different. I, and they, it would be tough for them. Mm. But the people who lasted, the people who were there two, three years, would all of a sudden realize that, well, it's not so different. People are just living their lives mm. and they're, they're working and they're, they're hanging out with their friends and they're, yeah. you know, they're just trying to you know, live. Mm. You know? and, they, and, and I see that as uh, you know, like kind of a, a little shift yeah. in, in the way you perceive things and the way you understand things. So mm. as martial artists, especially traditional martial artists, there are so many things that um, uh, that draw us together, you know, and that yeah. we that we could agree on mm -hmm. way more than anything that's different, you know. I was noticing similarities in some of my um, my karate, my mm -hmm. traditional Okinawan karate, you know, with this move that you were teaching, mm -hmm. and then you did it once where you actually closed your fist, and I went, oh my gosh, we have this movement in there several is, yeah. katas, you know, there's this, there's this, and it's like, it's not necessarily a strike, it can be a throw, and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, there it is, yeah. you know, and, and, and it connected the dots. Um, the picture up there is of uh, Chosin Chibana, who founded Shorinru, and he was mm. one of the uh, original Okinawan masters, but if you look at his position, you know, his leg is up, you know, and then there's um, a move in your style where you, you know, you, st you step behind and you try to trip the guy, and then what you do is you pick it up. Yeah. And then I was like, oh wait, if I pick my leg oh, up, yeah. um, so you know, again, movement is movement, and it's yep. it's very very similar. Yeah. You know, I've I've seen that reaction to a lot of people with Shui Zhao. Like, mm -hmm. um, I've been really lucky to be able to teach and do seminars with people who come from diverse backgrounds. You know, like you know. Um, karate and mm -hmm. hungar, tai chi, mm -hmm. you know, sanda, yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. And um, and as they practice, I can see them all like kind of go, oh, it's like this, it's mm. like this, or and they they're they're connecting to something in in, in their own movement, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. that allows them to um, to like uh, to understand the move a little bit deeper. Mm. And and I had the same experience, you know. Like I Shuaijiao wasn't the first thing that I did. I had trained. Um, Bagua and Tai Chi and Xingyi mm. well before that, mm. and so when I started doing the Shuai Jiao, I had the same thing. I was like, "Oh wow, this is this is going to make everything I I, I do better." You yeah. know, like uh, there's like that old commercial. It's like you know, we don't make the product, we make the product better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I like yeah. like Shuai Jiao's like that. You know, you want to be yeah. it'll. It, I have the utmost confidence that it'll make people better martial artists if yeah. they if they work at it you know I, if it's I, something yeah. that resonates with them i know? agree and yeah, as long as you're open to it you know I, I definitely think that it could it can and does make my karate better mm. you know yeah. and you know i mean karate was my original style and that's the style that i is the base style that i teach but i i don't consider myself you know a Yes, I am a karate man, but I am not boxed in by that yeah. title by that the, by yeah. that you know um i'm I'm a martial artist, but mm -hmm. beyond that, I'm a human being who's looking for, you know, I mean, as, you know, the cliche goes, Bruce Lee was, you know, looking for yeah. that expression, you know, but it's, to me, there's only so many ways to move, yeah. and it's like, oh, this connects, you know, but there's a tendency, well, but that's not karate, or that's not kung fu, right. so therefore it's bad, or it's no good, and I don't believe that. The, you know? m one of my teachers, um, not the Shuai Jiao teacher, but uh, the, one, the other one I had in Beijing, his name's uh, Zhang Weidong, and um, he was trained martial arts since he was a kid. Mm. I mean, he, he was at the sports university when he was a kid, when they were still giving out tickets for, 
food you know like mm. when they you know they you didn't have money you got tickets yeah, yeah. and so you know like he, he it's funny because he would they would give extra tickets if you did like the combat sports mm. or if you did you know um field events and okay. track or if you wrestled or if you did and so anytime anything to get extra tickets he would go do it <laughs> <laughs> he was like you know right. oh you need a shot putter i'll do it extra tickets yeah. you know like and so he did all this kind of stuff right. but he used to say that you know what you're trying to do is that you know eventually it's going to be you know um yeah, you know, Sunny style mm -hmm. and Trevor style yeah. and this style. Yeah. You know, that's what you're shooting for. Mm. You know, you don't uh, you don't go there too early. That's not what you really aim for because then you might stray from the path. Mm -hmm. But as you progress, if you're putting in the work, it, of course, it's going to just um, become an expression of who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then if, then it's going to be yours. You know, you always yeah. have to pay respect to wh who came before and understand the path that you have to take to get there. Mm. But still, you know, it's something that really is like, um, you know, who you are mm -hmm. and what you do, yeah. right? And so I totally agree with that, you know, and, and not to be limited by any one, you know, expression of it. Mm. You know, like it's, it's always the joke, like, you know, is it here? Oh, that's <laughs> the right position. Now you got it. <laughs> You know, I, I have uh, a lot of friends who've trained under Guru Dan Inosanto, mm. you know, whom I consider, you know, w you know one of, one of the, the very best in the world, you know. Um, but he said something in one class, he said, yeah, I, I think everybody should go at least learn five different martial arts, <laughs> yeah. you know. And I was just like, wow, you know. And, you know, his thing is that, to, my, to the best of my understanding, and I, and I apologize to him and to any of my um, friends who, you know, practice with Guru Inosanto, if I'm mistaken, but he seems to want you to, um, it's like go out and find these other styles so eventually you can find you. Yeah. What, what find you know, what right. works for you. And what, yeah. you know, it, it's like, you know, all, all paths lead back to you. Yeah. You know, and, and so I was just like, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That is really, know? that is really cool. You know, like I, I tell my students, um, especially like in the Tai Chi and, and, and the, these kind of like softer, more maybe introspective arts, you mm. know, I tell them, I go, I'm, I'm kind of giving you the, 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 the principles and I'm giving mm -hmm. you the tools. I go, but the, the understanding comes from within, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, you know, I might tell you something, okay, you know, like, as you raise the arms, you know, think about, you know, softening the hips and, and you know, relaxing the shoulders and then give them another, maybe a principle to think about. And as they do it, you kind of see them, like, kind of turn inward a little bit and go, oh, there it is, mm -hmm. right? And so who's really doing the teaching at that point? Is it mm -hmm. me or is it them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so the practice plants the seed yeah. and it nurtures it, but the understanding comes from within. It's from turning that perception inward mm -hmm. and, and then saying like, okay, well, uh, you know, an understanding what's happening. And so I think that's very much um, the way that you should kind of progress your practice, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, and that's when you get it, you know, like, um, it doesn't matter if it's here, you know, as long as you understand the intent of it and what it's supposed to be. If it feels better here and you're following yourself, okay, well here and here, you know, all this is the yeah. same. You know, it's all, it's all the same as long as you know what you're doing. What inspires you today? Today, um, you know, right now it's about my students. You know, it's about the students that I have. When I was, and this was something that took me a little while as a, actually as a teacher to really start, really to, to feel inside, kind of just like what I was ta talking about, you know. Um, when I, up until I moved back to California, I was training heavily, you know, hours a day, you know, for, I mean, I guess for the last like 20 years, really, I've been just training. And so it was very much about my own practice and my own understanding. Mm. And when I, I, in the back of my head, I always kind of wanted to teach, you mm. know, and I wanted to, I wanted to share, but it was, I also knew that the only way that was going to be work was to really focus on my own practice. Mm. And so then when I started teaching, you know, I was teaching and I was sharing what I knew and, and um, but it was still kind of coming from my own perspective and my own practice mm. and because I was just, just beginning mm. and I, I was still training a lot on my own and kind of doing what felt good to me and like mm. what, what do I think is going to, mm -hmm. you know, be good and, mm. then I re and then as time went on, I started looking at my students more and thinking like, oh wow, they're starting to get a little bit, mm. you know? Oh, okay, they're starting to respond. Or I'd see the student who wasn't getting it. And then I think, how can I make them understand? Mm. How can I, you know, really get them to, to, to progress, mm. you know? And so I would start really trying to think outside of myself, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, as a teacher, you know, when you start teaching, what do you have to draw from? You have your own experience as a student. And that's limited to, to your own 
path. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody who's exactly like you walks in the door, you'll be able to teach him really well mm -hmm. because you know he's gonna be on the same path you are. Mm -hmm. But how, that's not gonna happen, nobody is the same, right? Mm. So these people are gonna walk in and they're gonna have different experiences, they're gonna have different perspective, different physical abilities, they're gonna be in different places mentally and emotionally. And so really, if you only teach them from your perspective and what works for you, maybe they're not gonna get it, you yeah. know? And so you have to you know, understand that you're still learning as a teacher as well. What works for these different people who have different back backgrounds, who have different abilities, you know? That might not come in as physically gifted as a, as you know, an ex-college athlete, you know? And, and then how can you help them? Mm. And then your experience grows. Mm. And, and the, the, you know, like, it's great to see a, somebody like a student like mine, Trevor, I'm inc incredibly proud of him. Mm. Like, you know, he's, he's won tournaments, he's incredibly skilled and gifted, but I'm just as proud of like one of my like beginner Tai Chi students mm. when I finally see them like you know relax into a movement mm. and get it mm. you know and all they're doing is just moving a little bit you yeah. know like that gives me just as much pride you mm. know because um, I know the struggle that it took for them mm -hmm. to get to that mm. you know and so so right now I'm really trying as a teacher I'm really trying to think beyond just my own personal experience mm. as a student mm -hmm. and how best to you know teach these arts to people. Well, you know, the old saying is uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, yeah. which is true. But here's the, uh, the flip side of that, which I also <laughs> believe is true. When the teacher is ready, the students will appear. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. And it, it, that, that it takes both of those, you know? Yeah. If, if you, can ha you can be a cla in a class telling people what to do, mm -hmm. but you might not be a teacher to them. You right. might just be the guy barking orders out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know, you have to build that trust with your students, mm -hmm. you know, that they are willing to, to listen to what you're going to tell them mm -hmm. and, and do it, even though it might not be the, you know, instinctually what they you think they're supposed to do, you sure. know, like it's, I, it's this, in the simplest things I'll see it, mm. you know, like even just teaching in Tai Chi how to walk correctly, you mm. know, I tell them, you know, they come on their first day, I'm going to say, you know, uh, I'm gonna, in Tai Chi I'm going to teach you how to stand and how to walk. You didn't know you were doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know how to crawl, you know, like go to right. a BJJ classroom got <laughs> it. and they'll, they'll get you set. Got but it, got it. Yeah. The, I think it's kind of interesting, you know, in traditional arts, when you meet somebody who does traditional arts, what are the first things you usually ask them? Uh, what style do you do? Yeah, you know who's your teacher? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing mm -hmm. it? And then these are obviously pretty important questions, but I don't think they tell you like really the most the meaningful things mm -hmm. about training. Mm -hmm. You know, like I use uh, you know if I meet somebody new, of course all those questions will come up. But I always like to ask them. You know, like you know, you know, do you like training? You know, how do you do? You, do you enjoy it? Is it fun? You mm. know, okay. You know, how do you train? Do you train hard? Do you train soft? You know, mm. do you relax? Or is it, you know, what, what what role does it fill in your life? You mm. know, and um, do you like your teacher? Mm. <laughs> you know, is he somebody that you enjoy being around? Mm -hmm. And if if you can answer those, to me, are a lot more important than mm. who's your teacher, what's your lineage, yeah. you know, what style do you do, sure. you know, how long you've been doing. You can have a really famous teacher, been doing it for twenty years, and do a, the most mysterious style. Mm -hmm. But if you know. If you, if, if, if you don't like the guy very much, you practice only once a week, <laughs> you know? Yeah. A really important thing is the uh, stillness. Mm. Being able to, to, to slow down and, and just be still and be quiet and allow your thoughts to turn inward mm. and to really be comfortable with who you are, mm. you know? And, 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 um, and I, I see a lot of overlap between all the arts, you know, and so some people that come to me, if they train Shui Zhou, they want to wrestle. I try to tell them, maybe come to the Tai Chi class too, get mm. a little balance in there. Mm. They do Tai Chi, I'm like, mm. hey, you want to do some takedowns? <laughs> you know? Right. But we always start our classes with just some quiet standing and breathing, mm. just to allow um, kind of just things to kind of settle mm -hmm. and to, for the, the thoughts in our head not to go away, you know, I'd be really worried if somebody's mind went blank, you know, like, yeah. but just for them to, quiet and, mm. s and become a little more still to, to turn into turn inward with our gaze and see what's happening with the body mm. how are we feeling to really connect mm. you know um, and to focus on relationships the connection that you have mm. right but the connection that you have first with yourself between your mind and your body mm. and your physical being and your emotional being and your mental mm. really work on that and let everything else 
come from there mm. you know if you have if you strengthen that connection if you strengthen the you know your the comfort that you feel or at least the patience that you can feel with mm. yourself right like you know just learn to be being still and patient with yourself that's going to help you with the relationship you have with others mm. you know it's going to allow you to be you know a little bit more mellow a little bit more connected to people mm. and um and i think that's really important and it has to start um you know inward you know mm. returning and looking in we're all in today's world where everything happens so fast and mm. everything is just go 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 i mean we really people most people can benefit from just you know being still yeah. you know and 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 standing just mm. go stand you know stand and relax and breathe it's not that hard <laughs> you know like but mm. it is the hardest sometimes i'll do things i'll ask my students to do is just to stand there quietly mm. and breathe mm. and um man it's hard you know like yeah. you can just i can just watch them and yeah. like the invisible insects start mm. to you know to come and get them yeah. and, and um yeah. and that's the, that's what i would i would have my mm. students do and i'd want to help have them understand you know whenever you're faced with something that's difficult just come to a rest mm. and breathe mm. and just allow it to kind of settle and then you know then see how you feel see then see what you want to do mm. see then what's important and yeah very profound truth yeah well thank you uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so i want to thank you for um for being here coming down uh teaching the seminar mm. Uh, being on the show uh, it's my pleasure yeah what a pleasure it was and I look forward to building a strong relationship yeah, with you I look forward to it as well you know yeah. and this was uh, fantastic we really enjoyed my time with you well, I'm, I'm really happy it's, it was my pleasure to come and I love the 52 masters oh, series yeah thank, I mean thank you. when Sifu Rob you know turned me on to it and I watched it I think I devoured the first 10 like that <laughs> and I was like this is amazing this is like any kung fu kung fu like nerd is just uh, like this is great any martial arts nerd is like this is amazing I'm, I can't wait I really appreciate yeah. the support and you know we're going to continue uh, doing these um, uh, with good people like yourself <laughs> so once again yeah thank you <laughs> thank you it's a pleasure once again Sifu Sunny all the way from Visalia California this has been 52 Masters and we'll see you next time